As we wrap up 2023, Metro Vancouver home sales dipped to 36% below the 10-year seasonal average. So what's happening in the market and who has the upper hand? Is it buyers, sellers, and what's happening with prices as we head into 2024? I'm Adina Dragasanu with Adina YVR Vancouver Real Estate Group and Open Realty here with your January 2024 market update. Let's jump right into the numbers and take a look at what happened in the month of December, recap the year as a whole, and take a look at the underlying dynamics that affected 2023 and that are going to affect us as we head into 2024. Let's start off looking at the month of December. In the month of December, we had 1,345 home sales in Metro Vancouver. This is up about 3% relative to December of the previous year, and it's down 36% relative to the 10-year seasonal average. Looking on the inventory side, we had 1,327 homes newly listed for sale on the MLS in the month of December. This is down 60% relative to November, and it's up about 10% relative to December last year. Relative to the 10-year sales average, this is down about 23%. When we look at the total inventory of homes available for sale in our marketplace, in the month of December, we finished off at 8,802 homes. This is up about 13% relative to December of the previous year, and it's up only 0.3% relative to the 10-year seasonal average. If we want to look at whether prices are on their way up or down, we want to look at the sales to active listings ratio. As you recall, this ratio essentially looks at the number of sales in a given month divided by the total active listings left over at the end of that month. When this ratio is above 20% for the same period of time, we're typically in seller's market territory and prices are on their way up. When this ratio is below 12% for a sustained period of time, prices are typically on their way down and we're in what's called the buyer's market territory. Anything in between is considered a balanced market. For the month of December, this ratio was 16%, so we're right in balanced market territory, meaning that prices would typically stabilize. And this ratio is very close to what we were seeing this time last December in 2022 when it was 17.5%. By property type, this ratio was 11.1% for detached homes, so buyer's market territory. For attached townhomes and duplexes, it was 18.7%, so balanced market territory. And for condo apartments, it was 19.6%, which is also balanced market territory, right on the cusp of being in a seller's market. If we look at how this has affected prices, the HPI benchmark composite price for all property types in Metro Vancouver finished off the year at $1,168,700. This is down 1.4% relative to November, and it's up about 5% relative to December of 2022. If we look at this by property type, we see that the benchmark price for detached properties is currently $1,964,000. This represents a decrease of about 1% relative to November, and it's up 7.7% relative to December of last year. The benchmark price for attached townhomes is currently $1,072,700. This represents a decrease of 1.8% relative to November, and it's up 6.4% relative to December of 2022. For apartment condos, the HPI benchmark price is $751,300. This represents a decrease of 1.5% relative to November, and it's an increase of 5.6% relative to December. Looking back at the year as a whole, we see that we started off in January in balanced market territory, and we finished off in December also in balanced market territory. But if that's all we look at, we're missing the true dynamics of what happened in our market last year. Looking at the number of home sales in 2023, we had just over 26,000 home sales across Metro Vancouver. This is down 10% relative to 2022. It's down 41% relative to 2021. And it was down about 23% relative to the 10 year sales average. And again, looking at these totals seems like a pretty uneventful year. But if we look at this in the context of the highest borrowing costs that we've seen in over a decade, the fastest increases to borrowing costs that we've ever seen, it's actually pretty remarkable how resilient and robust our market remained throughout the year. Coming into 2023, many buyers were sitting on the sidelines waiting for prices to decline, and some forecasters even predicted that we were going to see double-digit price declines across Metro Vancouver. And in fact, we saw the opposite. As the year continued, we actually saw prices increasing pretty drastically in the spring and then staying pretty steady throughout the rest of the year. If we look at it across all property segments, prices increased by over 5% on average. And this is really important to note because it demonstrates the strength and desirability of our market here in Vancouver. Another theme that was constant throughout 2023 was the shortage in inventory. We had just under 51 homes listed for sale on the MLS throughout the year. 
This is down 7.5% relative to 2022, and it was down over 20% relative to 2021. And this was down 10.5% relative to the 10-year annual average. So ultimately, the dynamic in 2023 was a lot of buyers on the sidelines waiting for deals and sellers reluctant to list their homes on the market. This led to a shortage of inventory and lower sales than expected, and that's why prices remained relatively resilient throughout the year. And one of the major driving forces behind all this is the macro trend that we're seeing across Canada, which is excessive population growth and a shortage of supply of new homes being built. In 2023, Canada's population grew by a staggering 1.2 million people, mostly as a result of immigration. At the same time, our housing starts plummeted, and we were only building one new home for every 4.2 people entering the working age population. The historical average is 1.8. The government is trying to implement various policies to address this, but to meet demand and reduce housing inflation, economists say that Canada would need to double its housing construction capacity to about 700,000 homes newly built every year. And this, according to economists, is an unattainable goal. And we see this pressure in affordability, not just in home prices, but also in rents. Average asking rents in Canada hit a record high of $2,178 a month in the month of December. This is up 8.6% relative to the year before, and it's increased over 22% over the last two years. And BC continues to lead the nation with the highest rents across the country, with the average rent being $2,500 a month. And these dynamics are significant because these are the dynamics that are going to continue to shift the market as we head into 2024. What we're seeing in the market right now is a lot of hopeful buyers waiting for rates to drop so they could get into the market. And similar to what we were seeing this time last year, we're seeing a lot more buyers on the sidelines eager to get into the market than we are seeing sellers on the sidelines eager to list their homes for sale. I expect that we're going to see a very busy market this year, especially as rates start to drop. Coming into 2024, the thing I found most surprising is how quickly the market activity has picked up. Activity seemed pretty sluggish in October to December of last year, and we were seeing things really starting to slow down and buyers starting to get back on the sidelines waiting for better opportunities. But what we also saw in December is a lot of sellers pulling their properties off the market because they weren't getting the prices they were hoping for. So now coming into the new year, we see a shortage of inventory and buyers starting to get more serious as many seem pretty confident that rates are going to come down this year. So we've seen activity pick up in a big way in the last three weeks. It's going to be interesting looking at the stats and seeing what's happening, but so far the year is off to a faster start than we expected. If you're thinking of making a move in 2024 and want to get ahead of the market, get in touch and schedule a consultation. We can review your options and go over strategies on taking advantage of the current market. To do this, you could click the link down below in the YouTube description, or you could click the link in my bio on Instagram. And to stay up to date with what's happening in the market, be sure to follow me on Instagram at adina.yvr and click subscribe here on YouTube. That's it for this month. Wishing you a very happy new year, and I can't wait to see you in February.